Shalom. What's up, brothers and sisters? Happy Monday to you guys. Stay prayed up. Stay encouraged this day. It is the day the Lord has made. Even if it is a Monday, family, we're going to get through this week, and I wish each and every one of y'all a happy week, family. Don't let anything or anyone bring you down. You have a light within you that is meant to shine. If it bothers them, that is their problem to deal with. Continue to stand firm on the knowledge of Christ and upon that rock, that solid foundation, family. We have nothing to be concerned with. It doesn't matter what we face here, today, tomorrow. We have a mighty God. We are in the mighty hands of the Lord. He's going to protect us. He's going to provide. Jehovah Jireh is always going to provide, family. But be encouraged by what you're facing, even if you're going through trials right now, even if you're going through some afflictions. You know, praise the Lord that the Lord is still after you and seeking you and wanting you to change and wanting you to come to him. He wants our obedience, family. He wants us to surrender to him and let him handle the things of our lives that we think we can handle, casting our cares and our anxieties upon him. But be encouraged this day, family. Even though it's a Monday, we're still going to get through it. And I pray that each and every one of you are standing bold in the word of God. Do not let this world intimidate you, family. The more and more we go into these days, the world is going to try to intimidate you and, and, and push you away from God. Don't let no one, and I do mean no one, walk in this earth, turn you away from the Lord. He is our great and mighty shield, our buckler. We don't need any any weapon. We have the greatest weapon that's ever existed, the creator of all things. Cast your cares upon him, okay? I have a question, family. What is the time of Jacob's troubles? The phrase, the time of Jacob's troubles, comes from Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, which says, Alas, for the day is great, and that is none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's troubles, but he shall be saved out of it. It is our view that the time of Jacob's trouble family um, corresponds to basically the seven-year tribulation of end times. Um, in previous verses of Jeremiah 30, the Lord is speaking to Jeremiah the prophet about Judah and Israel in Jeremiah 30, verses 3 through 4. If you see in verse 3, family, the Lord promises that one day in the future he will bring both um, Judah and Israel back to the land he had promised their forefathers, but their return would involve many distresses. How, how awful that day will be, Jeremiah 37. It will be a time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob being, you know, basically meaning for the, all of the nations of Israel. Verse 5 describes Jacob's trouble as a time of great fear and great trembling. Um, verse 6 describes it in the terms of pains of childbirth, indicating a time of agony. But there is hope for the people of Israel. For the Lord promises he will save them, family, even though this is the time of Jacob's distresses, um, of distress, even though in all of history there has never, ever been such a time of terror. Um, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, family, God is going to deliver his people from that time. Jeremiah 30, verses 10 through 11, the Lord references the blessings that will come after the time of Jacob's trouble. I will surely save you out of the distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I am with you, and I will save you, declares the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. As part of the, basically, brothers and sisters, deliverance he provides from the time of Jacob's trouble, the Lord says he will destroy the nations who held Judah and Israel in captivity. Um, and he will never again allow Jacob to be completely destroyed. The Lord has described this as a time of discipline for his people. He says of Jacob, though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only with justice. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. So 
in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, it, you know, it says the day is great so that none is like it. The only time period that fits this description is the end time tribulation family. This time is unparalleled in history. Like, dude, if you just think about everything that we have been through and seen just in our generation already, and, and you know, all the war, all the stuff from the past, I mean, this time is going to be a million times worse than that. And I do believe we are heading for that when that I think we're pretty close. Um, like Jeremiah, Jesus described the tribulation as a unique time of much suffering, family, speaking of great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. I mean, that's pretty intense, family. It's pretty, you know, and you can see that in Matthew 24, 21. The Lord also used some of the same imagery as in Jeremiah. You know, in Matthew 24, 6 through 8, he said the appearance of false Christ wars and rumors of wars famines and earthquakes are a part of the birth pains so you can kind of cross reference jeremiah into the book of matthew paul too described the tribulation as well using you know also talking in birth pains in first thessalonians 5 3 saying while people are saying peace and safety destruction will come upon them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape you know that you all, and with a, a lot of the leaders nowadays, that's what you're hearing. You know, the new world order, peace and safety, this, this and that. Guys, be aware, you know, discernment, family. This event follows the, you know, the removal of the church in First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But all of that will not take place until the seventh trumpet. These birth pains are described in detail and you can read that for yourself, family. Take the time to read in the book of Revelation, chapter 6 through 12. It may take you a few minutes, but it's, it's trust me, it's worth the read. One purpose of the tribulation, the time of Jacob's troubles, is to bring Israel back to the Lord. You know, and that's in Jeremiah 30, 22, 30, 22 Hosea 6, 1 through 2, and Zechariah 12, 10. The time of Jacob's trouble demonstrates that God keeps his promises, man. He's going to judge sin, and he's going to save those who trust in Christ. And the end times, brothers and sisters, God's going to pour out his full judgment on the wicked world. And, these, and the seven-year tribulation from Israel's point of view is the time of Jacob's trouble. And in this time, God is going to purge his chosen people, you know, of the wicked and the unbelieving. You know, the wheat, the tares, all of that. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will, be, you know, will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. And that's Joel 2.32, and check out Romans 10.13. And that time of Jacob's trouble is a time of peace as the Lord himself sets up his kingdom family on earth for a thousand years. So even though there's going to be trouble and there's going to be all kinds of craziness going on, it's going to all pay off in the end because there is victory. There's going to be a brand new kingdom and all the wickedness, all the, none of it's going to exist. It's going to be completely wiped out, refined by fire. Fire. A lot of fire. Revelation chapter 21 through 6 and I read Isaiah chapter 11, family. But that is what the time of Jacob's trouble is. Love you guys. Have a great week. Later.